Well, hello there, Libra. Happy New Year. It's so good to see you. I'm Mary Sue, and I'm so grateful that you're here. Today, we are doing your three-month tarot reading. So we're going to take a look at each of the months, January, February, and March, to see what is on your path as we start this a bright new year. Um, lots of progress will occur this year. This is going to be a year if you want to get something done in your life, this is the year that it will work out for you. So um, we have a Pluto moving into Aquarius in March, as well as Saturn moving into Pisces. So big energies this year that will help us to make that traction and be able to move forward. So let's take a look first at your overall energy. White Raven Spirit, trust in the magic, yes, and rainbow blessings. Blessings are showering your life. Yeah, this energy that, you know, it's, um, I'm going to say Libra, it's this energy that you have a windfall coming that you are not expecting, that you don't even see on the horizon at all. It's really a lovely energy because it's magical. Whatever this blessing is, whatever this windfall is, you know, it's a turn of events for you. It is, you know, a, a job opportunity that just appears out of nowhere. It's a check in the mail you were not expecting whatever this is it literally is coming out of the blue um and it's it's going to be incredible it's the number 66 um a master number meaning big changes you know being recognized for um the work that you've done, um, what you are trying to do, how you have taken the high road in some area of your life. Um, I love that energy. Yeah, sixes are, you know, the fives are about, we know that there needs to be a change. <laughs> you know, the fives, five of pentacles, five of, you know, wands, five of swords. They're all about painful experiences or being in those energies where we're concerned about, you know, um, you know, how, how are we going to make a change? Not feeling good about ourselves. The sixes are almost the opposite, right? The sixes are that progress, understanding, finally getting the changes in your life that put you into a position of being the six of wands, finding victory, being acknowledged for the work that you have done. The six of swords, you know, that energy of moving from turbulent times into calmer times. Um, and look at this, you're showing up in your own reading right off the bat <laughs> so a really lovely energy is here so yeah I feel like 2022 was kind of a year where you were clearing out some uh, past energies we actually have um, karma underneath that so you know and that is kind of the energy of 2022 it really um, for a lot of people it's this energy of you know feeling like you couldn't get any traction it's because there was a lot of internal stuff that you were clearing out perhaps a lot of karma you know playing out in your life um from this lifetime or previous lifetimes it doesn't matter it's just kind of this energy of having to um they're saying like take out the trash <laughs> um yeah it's kind of that energy where you had to get take out the trash you had to get rid of the negative um, energy, thought patterns, habits that you may have had, people, toxic -ish situations in your life that you had to dispose of. You had to empty out the trash. And now you have that clean house. So now there is room for these rainbow blessings to come in. So let's get into it. We're going to take a look first at January. You have courage and the loving man. You also are showing up in your reading with this Libra energy. I really like this because because, you know, this is kind of the emperor energy, really having the courage to step into your power, but doing it in a loving way. And with the justice here, you know, there is that energy of being balanced, the divine feminine and the divine masculine being balanced within you. We all have both of those entities when they get out of <laughs> balance, right? That's when we can have issues in our life. But I feel like there is this strong energy of bringing balance back into your life and perhaps especially in your romance sector. So it's kind of like, yeah, I, you know, the emperor energy, I've been working really hard, trying to get my career, my finances all stable. And now it's kind of like, okay, I want to finish it out. I want to have the whole package. 
I want to have love, romance, relationships. I mean, it could be even family relationships, friend relationships. Um, and then you have the courage. Let me be open to courageously take the steps that are shown. Yeah, the loving man is very similar, you know, also to that King of Cups energy of opening yourself up to your intuition, of understanding, okay, the thing, the way things look in reality um, are not necessarily uh, the way that they really are. They're somewhat illusions, right? So understanding the difference between reality and illusions. And they're also saying delusions. You know, what have you been delusional about? I think that you have cleared a lot of that out in 2022. You may have, you know, felt like you were delusional a little bit about maybe how things that you had in your life were really affecting you, affecting your energy, affecting your ability to manifest what it is that you are wanting to create in your life. Yeah, because you have intuition, you know. Each person's road to the inner level is extraordinary and personal. How liberating to listen inside and sense moment by moment what's needed. Yeah. And so that's how you are keeping your balance is your understanding, okay, the external world looks one way, but that's only my perception. That's only my ego's way of perceiving the world. Now you're stepping into an energy of going within listening to your intuition um, and not taking things for face of value. Really interesting energy here. So in other words, you can look at something um, almost in that air sign type of way, logically, you know, scientifically even, they're saying, um, analyzing it. So if I'm looking at a flower, let's say they're showing me a, a flower, and I'm just going to say it's a flower, okay, for a minute. Um, let's say it's... Um, a pink rose. They're showing me a pink rose. Okay, so you have this pink rose. Well, last year in 2022, as you were clearing out some, you know, negative energies or thought patterns, habits out of your life, one of the things is you could have looked at that that rose, <laughs> the pink rose, with your analytical mind. You could have said, well, the scientific name for that is, and I don't know what that is, but the scientific name for that is, and you know, um, it's this tall and it has this many petals on it, like almost like super analyzing, okay, things in your life. Now, it's not the rose that you were analyzing so much, but it could have been. Um, a sense of analyzing all the different parts of your life and, and looking at it, okay, in that scientific way. How is this balancing out my life? Is this bringing me good karma or bad karma? Is this bringing me good energy or negative energy? You know, it's just that energy of analyzing. So you could have started at, you know, relationships, those people that are closest to you. You could have been looking at your job, analyzing it, scrutinizing it, you know, is this good for my higher self or not? And then I feel like there was also taking a look at yourself, you know, what of myself, my my beliefs, my thoughts, my patterns, my behaviors, which of these are for my higher self and which are not. And I think you really, I mean, um, unloaded a lot. You unloaded it because you recognized in analytically, you analyzed everything that it was, whether it was in alignment with you or not. Now, this year with 2023, if you really cleared a lot of that out, what you have left is beautiful. It's a beautiful pink rose. Now it's not that scientific rose anymore. <laughs> you're actually looking at it and you're looking at the beauty of the color of the pink in the rose, how the edges of the petal are perhaps a little bit darker, right, than the center of the petal. You're looking at how the stem has kind of like wound up around, you know, towards the sunlight. You're, you're looking at things in a much more loving way. And th that is the divine feminine, where I think last year you were in that divine masculine energy of criti not criticizing, critiquing things that are in your life and if they are going to stay or if they are going to go. And this year, 
the things that you have left and it may not be very much but what you have left you are nurturing you're bringing that divine feminine energy in and saying you know what i'm going to listen to my intuition about how to care for what i have left to appreciate it to love it to nurture it um because here you have the sun <laughs> lovely energy a time of great joy and success brilliant epiphanies that lead to magical opportunities yeah so it's kind of uh, this energy that once you cleared out all of that negative right that you were able to it's almost as if uh, you know like if you were in a home and it was all really cluttered and and the windows were dirty and and then you went through and and took out all of the the clutter out of the house and you washed the windows you know and really spring cleaned you know the bright sunlight could come back into your home and our home okay metaphorically represents ourselves um so i feel like that's what you've done you've gotten rid of the negative clutter and now in january you're kind of like whoa look at this <laughs> it's kind of like walking into your house and it's you know really clean and decluttered and the sun is shining through the windows and you're like yes i may have struggled in 2022 maybe even before that but now coming into 2023, I am set for a year of rainbow blessings, right? Because you've made the room. Once again, you've made the room. You have to clear out the clutter in order to make room for the new. Wow, really uh, lovely. Okay, so let's see what we have. Yeah, wow. Yeah, Ten of Swords. This is the, the you know... The, the habits, the routines, the people, the situations that you had to get out of, you know. And here you have the emperor energy. You know, you had to scrutinize. You had to look almost like at the hard facts about the people, the situations in your life, the things that you were doing and saying and thinking, right? You had to look at everything and you had to kind of like scrutinize it in a way. And now what you have left, yes, is truly in alignment with you because, you know, the two of cups is this sense of committing, not not just to somebody else, but also committing to your higher self. It's this, this is my truth. No, there's nothing that is going to go forward with me in this year that is not in alignment with who I am or who I want to become. Remember, this is the year of the chariot. 2023 reduces to the number seven and the number seven is the chariot in tarot. So that chariot can only really hold the driver and a couple of things. <laughs> you know, I think 2022 was one of those years of decluttering and now you're in your chariot and you only have a couple of things, the things that mean the most to you. And as you are moving forward, yeah, you're you're having to have the courage, right? You had to have the courage to to really make these this judgment call about what was going and what was staying, you know? What's in the chariot and what's not in the chariot? Because you have somewhere that you're passionate about going now. Um, whereas in the past, your chariot, <laughs> you know, was too encumbered with too many things, too many habits that were holding you back, you know, routines that weren't working, limiting beliefs, relationships that were toxic. It was difficult to get rid of that, you know. You give yourself a lot of love, compassion, and grace. You've done the hard work. Now you are ready. The King of Wands is somebody that is ready to move forward very quickly. You have the chariot ready to go and you are set. Um, so January, I think you're really just sitting in this energy of truly enjoying your clean house, <laughs> being able to ride around in your chariot, right? And, and, and know, hey, I created this. I created this lighter energy for myself and give yourself credit for that. There's, you know, um, only people that can do that work can experience that as an accomplishment. Um, and it takes, it does, it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of strength, perseverance to clear out the clutter. And you've done that. So um, enjoy that <laughs> month of rewards. It really is, you know, where I feel like you're going to already start feeling some of the blessings coming your way, if not for any other reason, but just energy, just having more energy, more passion, more inspiration, more motivation, 
for this year as you move forward. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, February. We have divine love. When you offer everything to the divine with detachment, you begin a love affair with spirit. And it's kind of interesting because you have the King of Wands here in January. The King of Wands is a spiritual leader. This is you kind of like surrendering, allowing yourself to surrender, to be of service to others, of stepping into your purpose. You know, one of the things is that when we clear out the clutter, you know, um, there is a lot of pain. You have had that, you know, there's been people, situations that have left your life that have brought you pain. But out of that pain comes our purpose. And that is what you're on the other side. You know, January is almost kind of like a month of celebration. <laughs> and then February is this energy of, okay, I've celebrated. I took that time to really celebrate myself, the work that I've done to make myself, um, to bring myself into better alignment with who I want to become. And now it's kind of an energy of surrendering. Okay, how can I now serve? How can I step into serving others? Yeah, because we have um, the Five of Cups focusing. What you've done in the past is focused on the negative. Now, um, now you're understanding. No, I want to bring things in. This is an energy of what you may have had in 2022. In February, you could even have this kind of come in, maybe around Valentine's Day or something, missing somebody, okay, or missing a situation, missing maybe even a pattern of behavior that you had put to the side, that you had overcome, you know, something that you realized was keeping you from who you want to become. I feel like in February, you kind of go through this. It, you know, think about it. it. We all set, well, I think we it, at, at least try to maybe set some resolutions at the beginning of the year. But most people break them <laughs> by, uh, by uh, Valentine's Day. And I feel like it's almost that type of energy. You know, we get six weeks into the new year and then all of a sudden our inspiration, our passion for the new year kind of wanes because now it's no longer, oh, you know, this is a fun new thing I'm going to try. It's really kind of coming into the mundane, understanding that the mundane <laughs> kind of hits in February. Um, and here, you know, like in the Northern Hemisphere, it's also the middle of winter. You know, for me, it's kind of like once I get through February, I can look forward to spring. Um, and so it's kind of that energy of I'm kind of in the middle of not having yet the new coming in the rain, you know, the new relationships, the new um, the new uh, projects or whatever it is that you're trying to manifest in your life. They're on their way, but they haven't arrived yet. And so you're kind of longing. There's almost this longing. Well, should I just bring something back from the past? Um, but I don't feel like you're staying in this energy. I think you're recognizing, no, wait a minute. If I bring this back from the past and I put it into my chariot, it's going to slow me down. It's going to be some dead weight that prevents me from making further progress. It's understanding that there's an ebb and flow to life, an ebb and flow to our emotions, right? And recognizing that and just saying, no, this is passing. This is fleeting. I don't have to stay in this energy. Instead, what I'm going to do is focus on what I am trying to create for myself. The four of wands, the happy family, happy home, financial security, stability in your life, you know, having everything, the fulfillment, the abundance, the joy, the happiness, a sense of celebrating. It's kind of like, you know, you celebrated all of January and then you got to February and it was kind of like, okay, uh, you know, is the part going to continue yes the party is going to continue I feel like for a minute you think how can it continue how can it continue because the past was so difficult but you have the courage to stay focused on what it is that you're trying to create for yourself the life that you're trying to create for yourself the uh, staying on your spiritual path um, staying in your purpose it's also about you know understanding that um you know, some days it's just mundane. That's the word they're using. You know, it's just maybe a little bit mundane. 
you know, staying with it, staying focused until it is really ingrained within you. It does not mean that it's not the right step for you. And your ego <laughs> will be trying to convince you to uh, turn back, you know, because, yeah, that is what is, yeah, that's what's happening, you know. It's, it's kind of like this, it's taking a long time type of energy. You know, the Eight of Pentacles, the Nine of Wands, I'm putting a lot of work into this. But I think in February, it's uh, once again that sense that it's feeling like work. I want you to remember, it's just the ebb and flow of life. We go through those cycles of, you know, everything is fun and rosy and exciting. And then all of a sudden, it's it, it has to work through this. You have to work through this in order to get to that point where it is joyful. It is part of you. It's kind of like, I really feel like, you know, your, your ego is really trying to get you to go back because where you're going is just so beautiful, right? And your ego does not like change. So it's, it's like, oh my goodness, Libra sticking with this. Like you've stuck with it for six weeks, whatever changes, you know, you're not going back to the relationship that's toxic. You're not eating, you know, the sugar or whatever, right? Um, you're sticking to those choices that, that are good for you. And then it's kind of like the ego is kind of like, well, we thought they would, you know, I thought Libra would quit by now. Libra hasn't quit. Okay will bring back the emotions of something that they have left behind. Try to get them to go back. We have to keep in mind, sometimes our ego really is, you know, just trying to keep us stuck because the ego understands that. The ego knows how to work that, even if it's not what's best for you. And a lot of times we start to second guess our, our choices in life because we get to a certain point and then our ego wants us to go back to that person that was toxic, right? That job that was toxic, those habits that weren't good for us. It's just doing that. And I feel like what you are, there's almost a little bit of a sense of yes, it's taking a little bit of willpower, but guess what? Yeah, I love this. Page of Wands. Yeah, I feel like it's almost like you have the Fool card, the Page of Wands, and the Two of Wands. It's almost like looking at this situation when your ego is kind of flaring up and wanting you to turn back. It's kind of like almost invigorating yourself, inspiring yourself. No, I know that this is the right path for me. I would say, Libra, one of the things you might want to do, yeah, because you have the King of Pentacles underneath, you're going to be successful at bringing in the blessings that you're looking for, whatever they are. Um, and I feel like there's also this energy here of perhaps um, really using a, either a vision board or keeping mantras like, on your refrigerator, your computer, you know, your bathroom mirror, whatever. Like really being able to kind of sit with the feeling of manifesting those things that you're really wanting, your heart is desiring to have in your life. So that when the ego starts to play this kind of game with you, right, you can say, no, nope, I got the tools. It's about having the tools to overcome the emotions of missing something that you know is no longer good for you, but that it's, that's why they, it's called the devil, right? The, the shackles, holding on to the shackles of something from the past. Um, but look at this, you're, you're moving forward. You're not allowing yourself to get derailed by your own ego. Um, you're moving forward and you're going to have victory. It's about keeping your eye on the prize. I would say that. Truly keeping your eye on the prize. And I think this goes away really quickly. It's really looking, right, the ego in the eye. <laughs> it's really your fears. Your fears of knowing, oh my goodness, if I keep going on this path, I am going to be successful. I am going to be healthier. I am going to create that business. My business is going to take off. Um, I'm going to attract in that relationship that I've been longing for. But that is also scary, right? So I feel like around mid-February, you're kind of like getting scared. You can feel this magic. It's coming in. You know it. But it's almost like you want to slam on the brakes. That's just your ego. It's your fear trying to keep you safe. 
Because if you continue down the path, there is always the possibility it may not work out the way that you want it to, right? And it's kind of like your ego just is trying to protect you from being hurt, <laughs> from having your heart broken. But that's not living, you know? Not everything works out the way that we planned, but it always works out for our highest good. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so what do we have here? Oh yeah, in March. And March, remember, Pluto is... Um, going into Aquarius and Saturn is going into Pisces. Look at this sanctity, sanctity. You know, finding that peace because it is. It's it's kind of like you know if there were if you you've decided to eat healthy and there's a big chocolate cake in the refrigerator, right? And you have the willpower, right, to not give in to the chocolate cake. It gives you a lot of strength. It sets you into this energy of having this power within you, knowing that you have what it takes, the perseverance, the determination, the motivation to stay focused on being uh, eating healthy and, not ch and choosing to not have the chocolate cake. It is very empowering, you know? Um, it's kind of like when you lift weights, when you first start lifting, you know, it can, it, it can be sore on your muscles and everything. And maybe you can't even lift that much weight, but then you continue doing it and you get stronger, you get more confident, you know, that you can lift that, you know, dumbbell or that barbell with ease. It's the same thing. I feel like in February, you're coming to that point and you're overcoming it. You're not allowing your ego or your fears to derail you. You're staying focused on where it is that you want to go. And there is this sense of peace. If I overcame that chocolate cake today, I can overcome it tomorrow and the next day and the next day, right? Um, because this is a time where you are truly able to walk away. It's kind of a little bit like when we're truly trying to uh, distance ourselves from a habit, a thinking pattern, a person, a job or whatever, and you have these fears coming up. It's almost like you have to go through that I call it the goodbye phase, you know, where it's your your mind is trying to convince you to go back, but you are not. You have in, in your mind, you're kind of like, no, I know this is the right decision. Even if somebody is trying to convince you that it's not, you're like, no, I can go inside. I can use my intuition, intuition in order to know what is the best for me, right? doesn't matter what's good for everybody else. I mean, as long as you're not hurting anybody else. Um, but it's kind of like, no, this is good for me. Queen of Cups, you know, well, um, loving, compassionate, psychic, self-sacrificing, deep psychic insights, caring for others and caring for yourself. You know, the Queen of Cups knows that she has to fill up her own cup before she can reach out and fill out, uh, fill up the cups of others. It's putting yourself at the as the top priority. And I feel in February, that's a little bit tested. Could be somebody in your life that sees that you are making progress on your goals, on where it is that you want to go. They're trying to derail you. But when you say no to that, it's kind of like this broadcasting to the universe. Yes, guess what? I really am choosing me. I'm choosing me, you know, over whatever. I'm choosing what is best for me. Um, staying focused on that star that you are looking to have. And it's interesting, you have the star underneath. You know, have faith, the future is bright. Dreams do come true. And that is what you are staying focused on. So I love that because you can't, you're, you're coming in, I think, <laughs> with all of this energy in January, just so gung-ho. February, you're still gung-ho, but I feel like somebody's like, reaching out to you, you know, a past love or, you know, somebody from the past or a good friend or a family member is, you know, not happy that you're making progress. They're going to try to pull you back. Your job is just to walk away from that. Say, no, I know what's best for me and I'm moving forward on my path. Um, 
And just understanding that you're stepping into this energy of being the star, of healing yourself, doing that final healing. I feel like this is a little bit of that final healing that you may need to do in some situation. But it's also about being recognized, having your dreams come true, having the rainbow blessings come pouring down on you. Um, and it's just <laughs> lovely, lovely energy. All right, so let's pull a soul truth card for you to finish this out. And Libra, I do do personal readings. If you're interested, the link is in the description box below. I'd really be honored to do a reading for you. All right, so two dropped out. Um, whom am, to whom am I comparing myself right now? Yeah, oh, that's, I, I mean... We hear that, you know, in the news and stuff about how detrimental it is to ourselves when we allow ourselves to compare ourselves to other people. Um, and yet that is kind of what we see, you know, um, in our society is a constant comparing. So uh, what you are able to see in another is only visible because it is within you ready to be brought out. Oh, shine light on this feeling of not enough and see the truth. All that you need and all you want is within you. Yeah, what a lovely message. You know, a truly lovely message of recognizing if you can see it in someone else, it's because you already have it within you. And where can I create more space? <laughs> okay, I think that most of you have created that space already. But if you're still cleaning out closets or something like that, that's fine. You can still keep working on that, you know. Um, and, you know, I, I myself was really frustrated earlier this week. I was like, I thought I already decluttered everything. And then I was just going through and it was like, oh, my goodness. So I'm almost like, where does this stuff come from? Well, I, I it comes from me. <laughs> I bring it. I bring it in the house. Um, but really recognizing, you know, it, it is an ongoing battle. I'm going to say that, right? It is an ongoing battle. It doesn't matter. You can go and clear declutter your entire house. And I I, I mean, I just think it just it, it's an ongoing battle. It's definitely an ongoing battle. All right, instead of filling yourself up with busy work and things to do and things to do, create more sacred space in your schedule, in your home, your mind, your lungs, and in your heart. Take time to just be. Do a clutter detox of your schedule, home, and innermost self. Make space. Clarity will come. Yeah, and I think you worked really hard on that in 2022. You know, that's why you're celebrating in January. But if there's still some that you feel like you want to declutter, it's about understanding, okay, celebrate that you are willing to still declutter. Celebrate, you know, you could, for some of you, you could recognize how much lighter you feel because you have already decluttered to a certain point. Might actually be kind of like, wow, I want to get rid of more because that was, it really raised my vibration. Um, and so I want to get rid of more so that I can be even lighter. My chariot will not have dead weight. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to leave it there, Libra. I do really wish you so much love, joy, happiness, prosperity in 2023. Thank you so much for being on my journey and allowing me to be on yours. And I hope to see you again really soon. Bye for now.